I, 24 female, am a bit paranoid about money. I didn't grow up in poverty, but times were tough and the idea of living paycheck to paycheck makes me uncomfortable. It's important to mention that now I have a stable, good-paying job, but I struggled a lot during college since my parents weren't able to save enough for my college fund, so I worked bad jobs and I was constantly exhausted during those years. I still ended up in some debt and I wanted to be free of it ASAP. It's also important to mention that I come from a pretty religious family. When I landed this job, I decided to start an emergency fund. I put aside a few hundred dollars every month so in case anything happens, I get sick, I lose my job, etc., I will not end up in more debt or even worse. The only people who know about it are my sister, who plans to start her own emergency fund after she graduates and lands a good job, and I. I 100% trust my sister, so I think my aunt or someone else overheard us talking about it. Now the issue is, my cousin's 22 male girlfriend, 22, is pregnant, and they decided to keep it even though they know damn well they can't afford it. None of them has a stable job, inheritance, anything. So a few days ago, he came to ask me to give him my emergency fund since he's having an emergency. I was speechless. I asked him what he was talking about, even though I knew, but I couldn't believe someone could have this audacity. He told me he knew I had some savings and desperately needed them. He didn't even mention giving the money back. I told him those are my savings for when I'm having an emergency, but he pulled the family helps family card. I still said no. While I understand they're in a difficult situation, I still think it's unfair that I'm asked to pay for his mistakes. I told him they should think more about what they're going to do in the future and how they're going to support this child if none of them has a stable income. Even if I give them my savings, that money is only enough for a few months. For me, for a family of three, even less. I didn't mention termination, adoption or anything, just that they're irresponsible for having a kid when none of them is financially stable. He eventually left me alone but started telling the rest of the family that I told him to get rid of the baby, which was not true. My parents and my sister were on my side but the rest of the family started harassing us and calling me a godless witch. So am I the idiot for keeping my savings? What? Not the idiot, I would laugh in his face too. Why is your cousin entitled to your emergency fund to compensate for his poor life planning and irresponsibility? You don't owe him anything. The best way to help him wouldn't be giving him handouts but offering to help buy some baby necessities like clothes, diapers, a crib, etc. But that's if you want to. I wouldn't get into buying stuff for him. He sounds like the type of person who will just view that as a green light to request items from OP, rather than see what he can get for free at a low cost online or from charities. Or the church that his family is so very fond of. Surely they can help. Agree, his lack of planning is not your emergency. Also, his emergency is going to last at least 18 years. If his family thinks you're so awful, why aren't they handing over their own cash? I'm a bit surprised your pretty religious family didn't give your cousin an earful for getting his girlfriend pregnant since they're not married yet. He should have kept it in his pants if he couldn't afford a kid. It's not even an emergency. He can get a job now and start saving. The fact that he's lying about what you said tells you even he knows he's wrong and is trying to manipulate everyone. Not a great plan to support an upcoming kid. Stick to your guns. Your cousin can take out a loan or get money from the relatives who think you're such a witch for contributing the exact same amount they are. Zero dollars. My 38 male daughter, teen, lives with me full time. I married my now wife, Suze, 35, and we dated for five years, but she constantly clashed with Anna because of their personalities. Anna is a good kid, responsible, kind, and helps around, but she's overall an introvert who doesn't like to be around people that much and enjoys her time alone in her room, while Suze is the opposite. She loves socializing, doing stuff with the people she loves, etc. She always invites Anna to help her cook or bake, do some gardening, etc., since they're both at home most of the time, but Anna always says no. Suze has ADHD. Anna always tells Suze off because she thinks she overwhelms her with her constant need to be around her. After all, Suze tends to knock at her door too much, she sometimes barges in, and she feels she forces her to spend time together because if Anna is in the living room, the kitchen, or in the garden reading, Suze sits next to her and starts to talk and then gets sad because she doesn't like to be around her. We've attended family therapy, and Anna is doing her solo sessions. I've also told Suze that Anna's privacy and solo time should be respected, but I don't think it's a good thing that Anna refuses any contact with Suze, and I don't think she's even trying at all. 
Anna has explained that being around Sue's tires her quicker than any other person because she knows my wife wishes she were more expressive and talkative and makes her uncomfortable. Yesterday, I came home early and I overheard Anna yelling at Sue's to get out of her room. I went to see what was happening and Anna was pushing Sue's out. She said that Sue's just knocked and let herself in like she always does while getting dressed. Sue's was apologizing and saying that she forgot the rule, but Anna said that she was tired and that dealing with Sue's is worse than dealing with a small kid. This made Sue's cry and I said that it wasn't nice of her and I grounded her with a week with no phone. She's not talking to me right now and I wonder if I was wrong because she's never given me the cold shoulder. Okay, let me get this straight. You grounded your daughter for being upset that your wife barged in on her while she was changing and instead of immediately going, oops, sorry, she tried to strike up a conversation with your daughter while half naked. Instead of getting onto your wife for not respecting your daughter's boundaries. By the way, this isn't an ADHD problem. ADHD is not an excuse to be barging into people's private spaces without invitation. This is a your wife choosing not to respect boundaries problem. You are the idiot, OP. I feel sorry for Anna. I felt exhausted just reading this. I can't imagine the utter nightmare it would be to deal with someone like Sue's. I don't exaggerate when I say that I'd probably be in tears from frustration. I'd probably try to take an hours-long bath so that I could be guaranteed, hopefully, some privacy. I came here to say the same thing. Poor Anna. I couldn't imagine someone barging into my room while dressing and then crying when they get kicked out. It's not even just remembering to knock. It's remembering to knock and then waiting for permission to enter. Also, she's a 35-year-old woman. This should not be a new concept. What the heck is wrong with this father for allowing his wife to act this way? OP, how about your wife gets to know your daughter as she is, not who she wants her to be? Honestly, the daughter is the most emotionally mature person in this household, so I wouldn't be surprised if your daughter decides to go no contact when they turn 18 if you keep allowing this. My parents hate my job and always call it playing on the computer. I'm a UI developer and I'm also a woman, so they consider it an inappropriate industry for me. My brother works as a teller at the bank, which they brag about to their friends as their son is a banker. I've always done better than my brother in school, sports, etc., but my parents always see him as better because he's a boy. So I've reduced my contact, especially since they're getting pushy with me for not being married at 27. Last year, my father lost his job due to a round of layoffs and then suffered many health problems. My mother has never worked and can't speak very good English, so she isn't able to work. And their house isn't paid off, so now they risk losing their house. They've had to ask my brother for rent and he pays about $400 a month. But their mortgage and other expenses come to around $1,800 a month and they can't afford it. So they've asked me for help and I've told them no. I can afford it, I make six figures, but I'm still bitter about being treated like a second-class citizen since I was a child because I'm a girl. I told them to charge my brother more for rent and they told me he has a girlfriend and needs to be able to enjoy himself. I told them they could figure out their own way to pay for it and they were angry because they thought I needed to help them. After all, they raised me. Not the idiot. Tell them you can't help them because you're just a girl. Oh, you have to save up your dowry since they can't provide it. Their mentality hasn't changed about your field of work. Their son still lives with them and only pays $400 in rent, but works as a teller at the bank. They don't need help. They need to start taking responsibility. Pretty sure that in OP's culture, it's as inappropriate for a woman to take over a man's duties to his parents as it is for her to work in that field. I don't care which culture it is, but she should stick to this principle. She'd emasculate her banker brother otherwise. Screw your parents. They can't treat you like a second-class citizen and then use you for gain. Their golden child of a son can get a second job. Don't give in, OP. Keep your money. They don't deserve your support when they do not provide the same for you. You are the idiot. This is the story of every other house. But right now, your parents need you. Whatever decision you make shouldn't haunt you later when you grow up. I understand pettiness and revenge, but you should make decisions that serve your benefit at the end of the day. Personally, if I was earning six figures and could help my parents out, I would. I'd use this time to rebuild a relationship with them. If that doesn't work out, that's fine. But if it does, it serves you. I agree this is complicated and the solution doesn't need to be binary. No, your family hasn't respected you and giving them thousands every month is not a fair ask. 
But is there some in-between option where you could lend them money or purchase a stake in their house and get added to the deed? I would probably take a little different approach. For peace of mind, I would probably give them enough to cover three or four months' worth of bills, which will give your brother time to save so he can pay the following three to four months' bills. That will hopefully give your parents time to find work or sell the house. Be the bigger person and explain it to them before or if you decide to help them, though. Me, 25 female, and my family, parents, and siblings have lived in Japan for eight years. I was born there. My mom would make curry for the family whenever it was cold weather. This tradition continues till this day, in another country. If it's raining or cold, my mom will call for lunch or dinner at her house on the weekend because it's her curry day. And this is sacred to my mother. She even goes to the center to buy curry imported from Japan for this. My girlfriend, Camille, 26, has been with me for seven years. Due to past disagreements, Camille and my mother don't have the best relationship. They manage to stay in the same room without fighting, but they keep nagging each other. Camille participates in the curry days and has even helped prepare, and some bad moments are going on because Camille keeps making suggestions for my mom's curry, and she, mum, doesn't want to know, but I already told Camille to stop. Recently, Camille has been bringing up that she wants to make dinner and call my whole family. I agreed until I knew what food she intended to make. She wanted to buy curry imported from Japan to make her own curry day tradition. I made it very clear that maybe this wasn't the best idea because it's a tradition in my family and my mother's curry day is a very important thing for her. The day to see her children and grandchildren all together. It would also generate unnecessary conflict since there were thousands of other dishes that Camille could choose from. Instead, she decided to make something extremely special to my mother, giving an idea, even if not intentionally, that she would want to compete with my mother. Camille got mad that my mom didn't own the dish and that she could create her tradition without having to ask my mom's permission to make a dish that wasn't hers. I said I understood, but I asked her if this was a battle she wanted to have with my mother and create an easily manageable discomfort that can solve by choosing any other dish in the world. She's pretty upset with me, which I understand, but honestly, I just want peace. And I am biased on my mother's reaction as she was already extremely upset when her sister-in-law decided to make this dinner for my brother and the children years ago. My mom doesn't care about many things, but curry day is important to her. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Even though, yes, technically, she can cook whatever she wants, being right doesn't always mean that you're not an idiot. I think it's pretty clear she's doing it on purpose. If she really wanted to start her own tradition, she wouldn't pick a dish that already has one. Camille is very clearly trying to get a rise out of your mom. It would be one thing to make the curry the way she wanted for just the two of you, but to constantly nag your mom about changing the recipe and then usurp her tradition and serve her a steaming pile of in your face in front of the whole family is completely different. She knows what she's doing and that it will cause friction with your mother and people discussing whose curry is better. This sounds like a very yummy problem. She clearly wants to one-up your mom's curry, though. However, your mom doesn't own the dish, and being, quote, extremely upset when someone else in the family cooks curry is beyond reasonable. I mean, is anyone allowed to cook curry ever, or do they have to wait until your mom makes it if they want to have some? It won't be yummy when Opie finds herself between these two women, again. That gets old. It's still weird as heck that Opie's mom got mad at her sister-in-law for making curry for sister-in-law's husband and children, though. Like, what? Why would you be the only person in an entire extended family that's allowed to make curry? I mean, if I were the girlfriend and inviting the entire family over for dinner, I would choose something besides curry since her mom is so odd about it. But it's still strange that she thinks it's some mortal sin to make a curry. Okay, this sounds stupid, but it's driving me nuts. I recently got a job at a climbing gym. We have bouldering and ropes. I got a call from a lady asking if it was appropriate for a group of little people. Now, I assume she meant, you know, people with dwarfism, short-statured people, etc. It's not like we have a policy for that, but I know people with some forms of dwarfism might have issues with their bones or joints or whatever. So I tell her it should be okay, but all climbing is at your own risk, so if they have any medical issues, they should ask their doctor. Well, the day of their booking comes around, and it turns out the little people are actually like a dozen small children. This was a disaster because there is a strict two kids per one adult ratio for kids in the gym, and also, kids aren't allowed to belay until they've been assessed, so we pretty much had to tell them that they couldn't come inside. 
The lady goes off on me for ruining their weekend, and I have to get my manager to bail me out, after which he laughs his butt off and calls me an idiot for not understanding that she was talking about kids. Who the heck refers to children as little people? Was I really supposed to anticipate that this woman's use of an extremely specific term referred to another group of people entirely? Please help me out here. Am I the idiot? This is why people shouldn't use stupid, cutesy euphemisms for kids. Heck, I've worked with kids for over 30 years and have never heard anyone refer to them as little people. Little ones, maybe, but never little people. Either way, specificity matters. You're absolutely right. Little people is one of the accurate, preferred terms used by people with various forms of dwarfism to self-describe. You are not at all an idiot, therefore, for making the assumption that you did. In the future, I might suggest that you clarify with the person calling, but was it a safe assumption? That woman was being cutesy and ridiculous. She should have just said children or kids. Instead, she used a non-specific term when it was unnecessary and then got upset when you misunderstood her. That was on her, not you. Not the idiot. Next time, when she means children, she can say children. Part of me suspects maybe this woman knew the rules and thought if she didn't mention the words kids, that was her green light to come and play the, but I was told I can. It sounds ridiculous, but I've worked in customer service and learned people are ridiculous. I really wish OP had responded to her arrival with, oh, I said a group of little people was fine, but per our rules, I was expecting them to be accompanied by the appropriate number of large people. So where are the other large people at? Not the idiot and your boss is wrong. How would you know that she wasn't referring to little people? Ladies should stop referring to children as little people to businesses who know nothing about her or her euphemisms. I think your boss is the idiot for calling you dumb. Little people describe adults of smaller statue. Children are used to describing humans of any size under 18. Update. Phew, I'm glad I'm not nuts. But I just want to clarify my boss didn't throw me under the bus. He told the lady very professionally to go away and quit bothering us and then laughed at me afterward because, in retrospect, it is pretty funny.